Alright, so, with everything in the game complete, Elite Four has been defeated, the Cerulean Cave has been cleared out, Mewtwo has been caught, there's only one thing left to do in this game, and that is catch them all. So, this is going to be a multi-part process, and this video will be pretty much a montage of all that, that happening. So, uh, first things first is there's a few Pokemon here that I did not manage to catch my first time around Kanto, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing another lap around here to um, catch everything, basically everything that had a less than 10% encounter rate that I didn't just find during my normal travels. So I'm going to be just taking another lap around Kanto, finding those, and catching all those. And then after that, we'll be going on to uh, Evolution exclusive Pokemon, so I'll be catching uh, multiples of things that are already in my collection, but I won't be showing that on screen just because you already saw me catch those, but we're going to be evolving. There's a lot of Pokemon that can only be obtained through Evolution, so that's going to be really interesting, and I say really interesting, that's going to be a thing. And then... There's the whole ordeal with I still need to catch Articuno because I, yeah I wasn't able to catch Articuno but um yeah I'll be showing that in this video as well so I think I've rambled on enough here for this intro part of this segment so um without further ado let's get to the montage of catching everything so first on our adventure on our second lap of Kanto we go to the Viridian Forest to find, firstly, a Metapod, which is a 5% encounter rate. So, just quickly show catching that. Bing bang bow, Metapod is mine. But that is not the only Pokemon that I needed to catch here in the forest. I also needed a Caterpie, which has just as likely to appear as Metapod and is the pre-evolution -evo pre of Metapod. So, hooray. I like how I found that first. But there we go, we got the Caterpie and the Metapod. Hooray. Next up, we go to Route 3, all the way to Route 3, to find a Jigglypuff. This, this thing's a big puffball, and although it's it has a 10% encounter rate, I just kind of didn't... kind of gave up on looking for it fairly quickly in my first lap of Kanto, so it's whatever. But there we go, Jigglypuff is mine. Next up, we move on to Mount Moon where we encounter a Clefairy, which is originally going to be the mascot of the Pokemon series until Pikachu happened and then just everything skyrocketed from there, as far as Pikachu's fame, but we have Clefairy in Mount Moon, rare thing in Mount Moon. Next up, we're fishing over here by the entrance to Cerulean Cave. I don't know if this is technically Cerulean City or Route 24 or Route 4, but whatever area this is. It has a Psyduck that we need, we uh, fished up and caught. So hooray, Psyduck is mine. Oh yeah. Nice. And then we move on to all the way to Diglett's Cave in between Vermilion City and Route 2 to find a Dugtrio, which is the evolved form of Diglett. And with a he little help of my uh, Snorlax that I caught earlier in the adventure, a weakened Doug Trio and managed to catch it. That's another thing I'm gonna you're gonna be seeing is me utilizing other Pokemon that I already have in my collection to uh, catch some of these things. Next up, we're at Route 10 to uh, fish up a Poliwhirl, which is the evolved form of Poliwag. I know, crazy. And there we go, we got a Poliwhirl. Just like that. A lot of these catches were pretty easy with Great Balls and Ultra Balls and stuff. And since we were in Route 10, might as well make a trip to the power plant to find the Magneton that we somehow never encountered. Despite it being... allegedly being more common than Electabuzz, and I ran into about like 20 Electabuzzes and no Magneton, so I don't know. It took me forever to find one of those. Anyways, next up, Route 18, or Route 15, I think, to find Gloom, the evolved form of Oddish which Gloom shows up in 
all of the uh, the seaside routes from uh, that connect Lavender Town to Fuchsia City. So I just went to Route 18 and or er, 15 since it's right there. Speaking of Fuchsia City, there's also a Pokemon to fish up in Fuchsia City. So I went over to this pond behind the uh, Game Master's house and also the Fishing Guru's house to uh, hook up a Sea King, which looks really weird in this game because of its lips that profile shot, but we got the Sea King, the Evolve Form of Goldeen, in case you're wondering, and hooray. Next up, we're actually heading to, we're actually in a Victory Road to encounter a Machoke, which still has a really stupid sprite in this game, but that's kind of, uh, that's kind of this game in a nutshell, really stupid sprites. Some are great, some are just, ugh. But there we go, we got Machoke, the superpower Pokemon. Next up, we're actually in Cerulean Cave here, we, so we've pretty much done a full lap already, and we're going back to Cerulean Cave to fish up a Seedra. And I believe this is like the entry floor, the entryway, so there's that. God's health down to pretty much one uh, from Snorlax. Almost murder killed it, but luckily it did not, and it caught Seedra. Now into the maze floor, we find... A Wigglytuff, the evolved form of Jigglypuff, it is very large and has very, very large eyes, and it's now mine and part of the collection. Hooray! 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 It's a big balloon. Another thing we encounter here in the maze floor of Cerulean Cave is a Chansey, which I'm extremely glad because uh, trying to catch a Chansey at the Safari Zone would have been the worst thing ever. Luckily, Chansey shows up in Cerulean Cave. And speaking of the Safari Zone, the last things we need to catch are in the Safari Zone, starting with a Dratini, which we can fish up in the first area with the Super Rod. This thing was a little bit hard to catch. There, I, I fished up a lot of Dratinis before I finally succeeded in catching one, because I tried doing a throwing rock strategy and stuff, it didn't work. It's just better to just chuck balls at it and hope to get lucky. Speaking of, here's a Scyther, which shows up in area 1 or 2, I can't remember, in the grass. It's a pretty rare, uh, one of the rare sites. Um, a couple other Pokemon I, I need to uh, get part of the uh, collection, which I failed to do first time. Not very rare, but got a Nidorino as well as, this is all in the first area as far as own, as well as Nidorina, the uh, female version of, you know, Nidorino. It's a hooray. Pig face thing. So got those taken care of. Next in the Safari Zone, we move on to the eastern area to find a Kangaskhan, which was a giant asshole to find and catch, as is all the rare Pokemon in the Safari Zone. So, hooray. But Kangaskhan is mine. Eventually, you know, we get lucky enough to actually have it stay in the damn ball. And this was probably the biggest bitch in my Safari Zone uh, quest, Tauros. This thing would not show up, and when it finally did, it would not want to stay in the balls. But eventually, I finally caught the Tauros, and it is mine. So, um... This, I believe, I was just showing off um, the fact that I, in order to uh, get some money, um, I uh, went through and defeated the Elite Four many times, in fact five more times, because that's what you can do in this game. After you beat the Elite Four, you can just go to the Indigo Plateau and fight, battle them again, it's fine. But the reason I did that was to uh, get some money, because that's, as at the end of the game, that's your only source of money. So, yeah, especially, like, if you fought every trainer, this is your only source of money, so. Fought the Elite Four a bunch, went to the game corner, and uh, gradually bought a bunch of coins, because I need a lot of coins for the f for this next Pokemon to add to our collection, and this is the only way to obtain it. So, our coin case. Fun fact, the coin case has a, a maximum count of, or maximum capacity of 9,999 coins, and also, if you talk to the teller to uh, 
get coins up to, or like get enough coins, but buy 50 coins, but um, you have more than 9,949 coins, uh, they actually won't sell it to you. You actually have to have uh, get an equivalent of exactly 9,999. Anyways, we did this get Porygon, which is costs 9,999 coins. Hooray. But we have us a Porygon now. So yeah, I did a little bit of just coin wasting in the slots in order to get the proper multiple. And uh, no, finally, another couple just odds and ends. There's a trade I managed to uh, never do because I didn't have a Poliwhirl at the time. So what it is, I fished up and caught another Poliwhirl. To, you know, not the same one as it's in my collection. So I could trade this guy in Cerulean City for a Jinx. And for some reason I kept the entire trade scene in. Because I don't know how to streamline things. Hooray. Haha. <laughs> oh well. But, hey, whatever. So yeah. We get the Jinx. Excuse me. We get the Jinx and, uh... We shall, um, check out the Jinx. There she is. No, that sassiness. Very good. So, hooray, we successfully traded Poliwhirl for Jinx. And uh, this Jinx happens to have the nickname of Lola. L O L A Lola. Lola, Lola, Lola. But yeah, anyways, color change. So, um, the colors are different here. That's because I pretty much have everything in red, so now I'm collecting everything in Pokemon Blue version to get all the things that are not available in red. So what I did was, well, first I grabbed another Helix Fossil because I needed another uh, Almanite. Then next up, I went to Route Number Four to find me a Sand True, which is not obtainable in red version. Also, hey, you get to see the uh, very, very uh, blue, that is the uh, blue version when played through in a Game Boy Advance. Anyways, next up we go to Route 5 to catch us a Meowth. Bing Bong Bao, as well as a Bellsprout in Route, route 5. Aren't version exclusives grand? By grand I mean fucking version exclusives, damn it. I don't know. Anyways. After that, we head on to Route 8, and we get the, uh, I guess the replace, the equivalent of Growlithe. In this case, it is Vulpix, and I also had to use Meowth to actually whittle down its health so I could actually catch it. But there we go. Next up, Route 12 through 15, we find us a Weepin' Bell, which is the evolved form of Bellsprout. So I just grab that real quick. Also, you notice I uh, started with a Squirtle and just kind of soloed with Squirtle through blue because that's kind of the easiest way to go through blue and red with a solo Pokemon is just or quickly it was just with uh, Squirtle but anyway just next up the fighting dojo we just uh, we had to beat the fighting dojo to get us a Hitmonchan which is the alternate to Hitmonlee since you only get one of those at a time and next up our Safari Zone adventure was not over because there's a couple of version exclusives in the Safari Zone starting with Pinsir which has a very weird looking sprite in uh, both red and blue. Next up, well, actually that was the only thing in Safari Zone, or exclusive in the Safari Zone. Next up though, we went to the uh, the Cinnabar Mansion Lab thing to find a Magmar, which is not uh, obtainable in red. So there we go, we got the Magmar. Next up, we're actually not in Pokemon Blue anymore. You notice the Pikachu looking or uh, walking behind me. We're actually in Pokemon Yellow version now, because although these aren't version exclusives, I wanted to show off the fact that you can get all three starters in Pokemon Yellow, since your starter Pokemon in Yellow is Pikachu, since it's based more off the anime. So um, in Cerulean City here, where we traded for the Jinx in uh, Red, we actually get a free Bulbasaur. Then we go up north throughout 24, and we're gonna get a free Charmander from this trainer standing next to the TM in this open spot. Hooray. Again, these are all based off of events that happen in the anime, and roughly around the same location as they happen. Also, you note that Yellow has updated sprites, as well as better color support when played through a Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance, which is nice. Lastly, in Yellow, we have 
We talk to this Officer Jenny here, just sitting in a Ver Vermilion City. After we beat Lieutenant Surge, she, she gives us a Squirtle, which is a reference to the Squirtle Squad episode of the anime, which are a bunch of ruffians at raised hell. But anyways, that's all that needed to be shown of Yellow, because since there aren't any Yellow exclusive Pokémon. So next up, we're back in blue, to uh, because not only did I get the Helix Fossil, I also needed two Dome Fossils, so I actually did s multiple playthroughs of blue to get these separate fossils. The Dome Fossil gives us Kabuto, which we'll see later. And finally, it's time to trade everything to Red. So, what I did in Red was I just went throughout one and caught a bunch of Rattatas and Pidgeys as trade fodder. And here we go. So, this setup is I have my GameCube with Red, obviously, so to record this part. We're in the Trade Center. Um, I also brought out my old Game Boy Color, since I have that, as well as the Game Boy Linked cable. I put blue version in my Game Boy Color, linked the two consoles together, and now you're going to see a link trade between, well, it's supposed to be between friends, but it's between myself because I'm a lonely sack of garbage and I just have multiple Game Boys to uh, trade with myself, but this is the gist of it. I use my trade fodder to get all the things from my blue playthroughs as well as yellow to, uh... Yeah, trade everything. I'm only going to show this first trade here, and then I will show the, uh, basically the results of all the trading, so all the things that I got from blue and red and, or not red, but blue and yellow. So yeah, the trades work out just the same as in-game trades, except, you know, it's with other real people, which is, you know, a really neat feature, I have to say. There we go. We now have our Brel Sprout in red. Hooray! And then, trade completed. So now, here's what happens when everything has been successfully traded. Note on the top of the screen, bam! There's my red profile. The bottom of the screen is my blue profile. And there we go. That's, that's all those things traded. So... Unfortunately, you can only trade six Pokemon at a time because you can only trade within Pokemon that are in your party. So I had to reset the games and do some more trading, move some more Pokemon around to get a lot of these things. Also got uh, multiple Eevees since there's only one Eevee per playthrough that you can obtain. So that's another thing I had to do multiple playthroughs for is to get an Eevee. But there we go. There's our next group of Pokemon, and then we had to just get two more, the Sandshrew and the Meowth, over to red. And then finally, we uh, traded over the three starters from yellow version, as well as another Eevee. But, um, and as far as the other starters are concerned, I just started a new game in blue to, uh, get, uh, not sure why I'm showing this Kabuto. I guess just to show the sprite, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I started just new playthroughs in blue, played up to the point, or picked a starter that I needed for the collection, went up to the point where I, uh, could catch a Pokemon, caught a Pidgey, then just traded the starter, then repeat, rinse and repeat until I had all the starters. Here's another trade I actually forgot about, and was wondering why I was missing Lickitung, but, well, um, <clears throat> this is why, because I needed a Slowbro to trade for a Lickitung, with this trainer over on the um, the uh, southern exit building of uh, Cycling Road, in between Cycling Road and Fuchsia City. So there we go, we got a licking lick a tongue now. His name is Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Give you some hot tongue action. And finally, it's time to evolve everything. That's everything per caught. Now it's time to evolve. So, my original strategy was to use the Experience All item and just uh, destroy shit in the Cerulean Cave, which I did up to the point of evolving the Squirtle. Then I realized the Experience Alt is a terrible, terrible item, and this is the worst way to try to grind. So, instead, I brought out Mewtwo just for some extra insurance, and I decided to just do some bait-and-switch uh, leveling up through fighting the Elite Four, which worked out surprisingly well. I'm actually shocked at how little I struggled, considering every... You know, every Pokemon got a free turn, or free attack on my team. 
in every battle since, you know, yeah. But anyways, we got uh, Tentacool evolved into Tentacruel at level 28-ish, as well as Mankey into Primate at level... Actually, I think Tentacool was level 30, but Mankey into Primate at level 28. At this point, I decided to just do this in Pokedex order to make it easier for myself and to organize my boxes as I go, or my PC boxes, so... I evolved Bulbasaur at level 16, then I have my separate Bulbasaur evolved into Ivysaur, and then at level 32, it evolved into Venusaur. Hooray, so these are the starters. Next up is Charmander, which at level 16 will evolve into Charmeleon. Fun fact about Venusaur is the only... It's weird how Venusaur evolves at level 32 as opposed to 36 like the other two starters, but whatever. Uh, anyways, reach th level 36 with the Charmeleon, you get a Charizard, which is really badass. And then, uh, since I already showed off Squirtle at level 16, once War Turtle reaches level 36, we get Blastoise. Speaking of level 36 evolutions, we have a Pidgeotto, which will evolve itself into Pidgeot at level 36. Again, most of this, almost all of this is done through just fighting the Elite Four over and over again. Putting these Pokemon in the lead to make sure that they get experience for the battle, but never actually battling with them. Anyways, next up is Sandshrew and Sand Slash at around level 28. Some of these evolution levels, I don't quite remember exactly what they are. I think Meowth evolves in the Persian around the level 28 area. Psyduck, I believe, is level 33 for it to evolve into Golduck, which it is doing right here. Nice. Next up, we have Ponyta, which will evolve into Rapidash at level 40, which evolves into just a bigger version of itself and also becomes a unicorn because horn. Next up is Grimer, which evolves at level 38, I think, into Muck with this Yo Bro hand. I love that. And then the Crabs. Crab evolves into Kingler at level 28 ish. I don't know. I, I forget when Crab evolves into Kingler. Voltorb. That evolves into Electrode at around level 30, I believe. Again, a lot of these I don't exactly remember, so I apologize if I'm wrong about some of these. This one I know is Magikarp evolves into Gyarados at level 20. So basically Magikarp becomes useless, goes from being very useless to being very useful at level 20. Next up is Omanyte, evolving into Omastar at level 40. Also, you notice that the uh, the colors in that recording are kind of faded. I don't know what was happening during that recording session, but the colors were just kind of faded for that session. It's fine. Anyways, Kabuto, the other fossil Pokemon that come from the Dome Fossil, evolves into Kabutops at level 40. And then we have Dratini, which evolves into Dragonair at level 30. It also takes for fucking ever to level up Dratini and Dragonair. And then... What I did was, um, those 10 rare candies I had stockpiled at the, uh, throughout my entire adventure. I leveled up another Dragonair all the way to 45, and then I said fuck this, and I used up all 10 of my rare candies to level up Dragonair from 45 to 55. And also, Dragonair decided, I, I decided to just teach it Hyper Beam at 55. It has shit for attacks. <laughs> for level up attacks until it learns Hyper Beam. That's the thing I've noticed about the first generation. A lot of the level up movesets are terrible. Absolutely atrocious. I guess that's why TMs and HMs exist. Anyways, Dragonair evolves into Dragonite at level 55. Yes, that's right, 55. And that's all the level up evolutions. Next up, we have the stone evolutions. So, starting off, we use a Moonstone on this Nidorina here, which... This is the only stone in the game that actually has a finite supply, so... Kinda have to be a little bit careful... ...about... ...how you use your moonstones. Luckily I had exactly enough stones to, uh... ...evolve everything, so that's good. But anyways, yeah, moonstone to evolve Nidorina into Nido Queen, And even though I already showed this, because I had one of these in my party... Doing it for the sake of collection, another Moonstone to evolve Nidorino into Nidoking. And our final Moonstone evolution uh, evolves Clefairy into Clefable. The only other Pokemon in this game that actually evolves via the Moonstone is Jigglypuff, but 
since you can find Wigglytuff in the wild, I don't have to worry about that, thank god. So that's good. Now we, next up, we use Firestone to evolve Vulpix here. Of course, Firestones, uh, Thunderstones, Waterstones, and Leafstones can all buy at the Celadon department store for $2,100, which is really useful. So Vulpix evolves into Ninetales via the Firestone. Next up, we have Gloom that evolves via the Leafstone into Vileplume, who's... Um, uh, flower there is a little bit off center of its head. It's a weird, very weird sprite, but whatever. Again, another evolution I've already showed off because this was part of my team, but for collection purposes, just going to show evolving this Growlithe into Arcanine via Firestone. And hooray. Next up is Poliwhirl, which when we use a Water Stone on it, it'll evolve and gain the fighting type into Poliwrath. Doesn't really look much different, it's just kind of larger and also will punch you now, I guess. Anyways, next up, another Leaf Stone used to evolve this Weeping Bell into its final form of Victory Bell. It's big ass mouth. I mean, it's Venus Flytrap, so you know, big mouth. Anyways, more Water Stone uses now to evolve Shelter. This little stupid shell thing with his tongue out. And he evolves into the Water Vagina Cloister via the Water Stone. Haha ha jokes. Leaf Stones! More Leaf Stones, so... Uh, excuse me. Kinda had a little, uh, like, hiccup thing there happening. Anyways, uh, Leaf Stone evolves Execute into Exeggutor. I'm not sure, sure how six eggs, a collection of six eggs evolves into a coconut tree, but hey. It's Pokemon logic, I'm not going to question it. Anyways, with another Water Stone, we are going to evolve the Star You into Star Me. Which has a very, very large jewel on its face. And now for the most interesting of evolutions. So, Eevee. It can evolve one of three different ways, depending on which stone you give it. And, uh... Yeah, it's really unique and really interesting. So if you use a Water Stone on Eevee, it'll evolve into a Vaporeon. But that's not the only thing Eevee can evolve into. Because if you use a Thunderstone on Eevee, well, um, you're not going to get a Vaporeon, that's for sure. Instead, you're going to get a Jolteon. Yeah, and also Eevee's type changes from normal to water with Vaporeon and normal to uh, electric with Jolteon. Here's another uh, kind of faded color one from that recording session. Again, I don't know what happened, but hey, it's whatever. But um, if you use a Firestone on Eevee, you get its third and final uh, separate evolution, Flareon, the fire type, obviously, because evolution. Now, those are all the stone evolutions. Now for the four evolutions that are the most weird in this game. You see, I'm in blue version, and I'm trading this Kadabra over to from my, part of my collection from red to blue. And upon being traded, Kadabra evolves. Trade evolutions are a thing. And also, I found out these can't actually be cancelled. I tried spamming B so I could maybe have it evolve when I trade it back to red, but that didn't happen. Or it couldn't happen, so... Oh well. But, um... Yeah, there's Kadabra. So now, Kadabra evolves into Alakazam upon trading. Our next trade evolution Pokemon is Machoke, which will evolve into Machamp upon being traded. So, gains two more arms. Hooray. Our third of four trade evolutions is Graveler, which upon being traded will evolve into Golem. Yeah, big ass boulder. And then our final trade evolution. This is Haunter, which, when traded, will evolve into a very scary ghosty ghost. You may remember him from the Agatha battle. Haunter evolves into Gengar. Ooh, spooky. So that's everything traded. So now there's only one thing left to take care of, and that is Articuno. 
So, the setup for catching Articuno is I went to the daycare here, and I uh, put the Haunter, that would eventually become the Gengar in my collection, in the daycare. So as I ran along and uh, leveled up everything, Haunter would gain experience for every step I took. Now the game daycare is does cost a premium. It's one hundred dollars for um, having leaving your Pokemon there, as well as an additional hundred dollars for every level they gain. So since Haunter gained eight levels at that stay, um, it cost nine hundred bucks. But there's a reason why I use Haunter. It knows hypnosis which uh, puts Pokemon to sleep, which is the alternate strategy to freezing stuff, since I can't do that to Articuno, since it's a nice type. So, now after evolving Haunter into Gengar, I decided to go after the Articuno. So, basically it's kind of the same as um, the uh, freeze strategy, except I just spam Hypnosis. Hope that it hits, because Hypnosis isn't the most accurate of attacks, but luckily I get pretty lucky throughout the battle. And then while Articuno is asleep, just whittle down its health to below the one-third threshold, so I can actually chuck balls at it and maybe catch it. So, this slowly happened of course, over the course of this battle. So, Articuno is asleep, its health is down to a third, or under a third, so I chuck one single Ultra Ball at it, and apparently that was good enough to catch the Articuno. With that 20% chance, oh yeah. According to the calculator I use, at least. So there we go, we got the final legendary bird, Articuno. And that completes the collection. That's everything. So, now, here, here's, uh, here it goes. We, we got everything in the game. Every single Pokemon. The collection is now complete. Holy crap. So yeah, Articuno was kind of the epic finale of the collection. So, here it is, scrolling through the Pokedex, got the Pokeball item next to every single Pokemon in the uh, Pokedex, meaning that I have captured that specific Pokemon, all the way down to number 150, Mewtwo. So here in the Game Freak uh, building in Celadon City, we talked to this guy. Wow, excellent. You completed your Pokedex. Congratulations. And because of that, he gives us a diploma. Player Rhino, congrats. This diploma certifies that you have completed your Pokedex. Signed, Game Freak. It's a very simple reward, but it's a neat reward anyways. Just, uh, just have it there. Next, we're actually going to get our Pokedex rated by Professor Oak here, so let's go to Professor Oak's PC. 150 seen, 150 owned. His rating, your Pokedex is entirely complete. Congratulations. Aw oh, yeah, I did it. Woo. So now, one thing, uh, one last thing I want to show off is the uh, Pokemon Hall of Fame. And I'm going to kind of speed through this here because um, it scrolls, you know, for each individual Pokemon. So, this is pretty much to show how many times I actually had to fight the Elite Four in order to uh, level grind everything and evolve them. You can also see how my team progressively gains levels throughout the uh, the grind, and also Mewtwo, because Mewtwo was very, very useful in this, since he was my the highest level Pokemon I had, and was also extremely strong with the Psychic, so. Yeah. Didn't care, didn't care, uh, I, 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 I don't know. It was yeah, Mewtwo was very useful. Eventually he leveled it up to over 80, got a uh, Jimmer, the uh, Nita King, up to level 75, at least. We're, we're still strolling quickly. I, I had to fight these guys a lot. Already up to Hall of Fame entries number 25. I don't remember how many times you have to enter the Hall of Fame before it, uh, like, like the maximum number of Hall of Fame entries that it will show on screen. But anyways, here's the final Hall of Fame entry. Number 29. So I had a level 7... Uh, Arcanine was up to level 74. Arrow was up to level 60-something, 60 67. Neither King 79. Mewtwo up to level 85. And there we go. That's it. So, everything has been collected. Everything is done. 150 Pokemon caught. But, what if I told you there were 151 
Pokemon in this game. Stay tuned for the next episode.